Today, I'm gonna to cover how to make a smart to-do list in Airtable. This to-do list has the exact same functionality as the one that I created in Notion, if you saw that video. But it's actually easier to set up in Airtable and there are some bonus features that we can add to make it even cooler. So this is the final product we're gonna end up with. We've got a inbox here where we can write all of our tasks as they pop into our head and you can just get all your, everything out into this inbox here as soon as I assign it a due date. So for example, eat 12 hot dogs. If I say this is due today, then it's going to filter out of this inbox and I can go into due today and see that it is here. It's also due this week because it's, you know, within the next seven days and ask my boss. So I have a category here of different categories that I can give these things. And so if it has a category of ask Jordan, my boss, it's going to show up here. And then also if anything is completed, so if I'm looking at my do this week stuff and I say that I completed these things, then they filter out of the, you know, the filtered view we have here. And I can see that they ended up in the completed view. Not only that, but I can also see when I finish these tasks. I also have a calendar view that shows all of the tasks in a calendar format. The other thing I showed in the Notion tutorial was how to create linked records. And so we'll do that here as well. Back in my inbox, I'm gonna unhide a couple fields here. So for each to do, I can choose the class from a linked list here of my classes. And then when I choose one, it pulls in the email address of the TA who I need to send my project to. So assuming I have to do a write-up for each of these things, I've got the email address right here. And that is pulling from this classes table that is linked. So in the linked classes table, I can also see all the to-dos that are associated with each class. And there's that email that it's pulling into this table. All right, enough reviewing, let's build it. So I've created my empty base here that we're gonna use for this project. I'm gonna call this our to-do list here. And then I will get rid of these example fields. And for this to-do list, we're gonna have a task name, then we'll have a due date. So we create a new field called due date and it's gonna be a date type field. Next, let's create a category. This is going to be a single select, which is like a drop down. And let's make a field to show when a task is completed. So we'll call this completed. And this is going to be a checkbox field. Great field. Got our nice little checkboxes here. And then lastly, I'm going to create date finished. And actually this is kind of one of our more advanced features here, but let's just get it over with since we're creating this field. And so basically what I wanna do here is I've got a, a field type in Airtable that's called last modified time. And so that's gonna show when any of these fields was last modified, but I can even make it more specific than that because I can go click on specific fields and then I can tell it to just watch the completed field type. And so then if I click use selected fields, create field, then this field is just going to tell us when this field was last modified. And actually it's showing us a date and a time here because I had already, you know, just a, a, for example, clicked it. And uh, so even that little click it recorded it, what we're going to use it for is that, you know, when we click check, when we check something completed, we're going to assume that that's the last time this checkbox was modified, right? Because why would you check it again? And so it'll always tell you exactly when you completed that task. Now, this is actually recording the time. I don't think we really need to be that specific. So I'm just going to go into the formatting here and get the time out of here. And so I'm also going to uncheck this and let's paste in some example data. So Airtable is a database and in our database, we have our data here, but then we also have our views over here. And so right now we just have this one view. I'm gonna minimize these things for now. And so views are basically a way to look at your data. So these, this is a grid view here. And in that grid view, we can filter, group and sort the data by any of these columns. And then if I open this back up again, then we can actually not only create more grid views, which is like this spreadsheet view, but we can create a calendar, a gallery view, a form, and, and look at our data in any of those ways. 
So we are gonna make a calendar view, but first I wanna optimize our grid view because that's gonna be the main way that we interact with our to-do list. And so because this to-do list is following the getting things done framework, which means that we dump everything out and then uh, everything moves out of the inbox into the appropriate context so that we only see, we're not overwhelmed by all of our tasks. We wanna filter things out of our inbox once they can go into other categories. And so basically when it has a due date, I want it to leave the inbox because the due date is kind of the last thing I do. I put everything else in, then I give it a due date and then it can be on its way. So I'm gonna filter this inbox and add a condition where due date is empty. And now anything with a due date is gone. Where did it go? Well, it's still there in the data behind, but it's been filtered. So let's create another grid view here. So this one's gonna be called due today. Create new view and you can see all of our data is back again. And so instead of the way I filter the inbox, I'm gonna go in here and say where the due date is on or before an exact date today. So due date is on or before today. And the other thing that I wanna do here is to um, add a condition about the completed checkbox because I don't wanna see anything that's already been completed. So I'm gonna say, and the completed box is unchecked here. So I could say checked and I could say unchecked, I'll leave it unchecked. So as we can see, these are the things that are due today that are not completed. And if I complete one of these, it's gone. So let's create one more of those. This is gonna be due this week. Create new view and we'll filter this and say where the due date is on or before one week from now. And completed is not checked. Now I'm gonna match my notion to-do list exactly. And in that one, I also had a view that showed uh, only things that I needed to ask my boss about. So let's create another one. This is gonna be ask Jordan, create new view. And so this one, I wanna filter it. And the condition is going to be where the category is ask Jordan. And of course, when completed is not checked. And now that we've got our different context views here, we can also add a completed view to show us all of the tasks that are already finished. So let's create that one, completed, create that view. And so this one is just going to have a filter and we'll add a condition that completed is checked. And so now we can see exactly what we already did and when we finished it, because we already created this field that's gonna show us when we completed the task. So if I go back into do this week and let's say I wanna you know, complete a couple more tasks here, I go back into my completed view and they showed up quite nicely here. Now, if we want to create a calendar view, that's just as easy as just clicking our calendar view down here. And let's just say, we'll leave it named calendar create new view, and then it's gonna ask us what date field we wanna to use to generate the, the calendar view. So it guessed that that due date was the correct one, and it is, that's, that's exactly the date that I wanna use here. And so when I click done, then we've got this nice uh, calendar view where we can see um, all of the different to-dos that are on each date. And in the calendar view, we can even filter it to remove the completed tasks if we wanted to. So we can just go in here, completed is not checked. So as you can see, it is really easy to set up one of these to-do lists in Airtable and super powerful. This is the system that I use as my task manager, except that mine is a little more advanced because I have automatically recurring tasks too, meaning there are tasks that I want to show up every day automatically. And so I actually have an automation set up in my to-do list um, to automatically create tasks for me at, at the beginning of each day. And if you want to learn about that, I will link to a tutorial at the end that shows you exactly how to set that up. But before we get there, I told you that I would show you how to set up linked records as well. 
So let's say that all of our to-dos or a lot of our to-dos are linked to a class. So as a college student, I have a lot of to-dos and I wanna link them to a table I have full of classes so that I can then pull in information about the classes that's relevant to each task. So I'm gonna create a new table here, create empty table. This will be called classes. Save, let's remove these fields. And so the classes are gonna be music, theory, history of music two, and world of music. And then let's make an email field, TA email. So I'm assuming that most of the time when I have an assignment for a class, I'm going to need to submit it to my TA. And so I want to be able to pull in the email address into my task. So I always have the relevant email address right in front of me. So let's, we'll call this TA email. This is going to be an email field type. Now I'll paste in some emails here. And so now what I want to do is link this table to the to-do list table. So I'm actually going to create a new field here. And then the field type I'm gonna choose is link to another record. So when I click this, it gives me the, an option to link to the to-do list table. So I'll click that and let's see, allow linking to multiple records. Yeah, because I might have multiple uh, tasks related to each class. So I'm gonna create the field. And now we've got a link between the tables. So if I go in here and I hit plus, I can see all the different tasks that I could link to each course, but usually I probably won't link them from this table. I'm probably gonna link them while I'm in here, right? So you can see it created a new table here that's linked back to classes. And so now when I'm entering, like, so, you know, when I've just entered that I need to do my music homework, I can go over here and say, yeah, that is related to world of music. So let's hide a couple fields here so we can see better the completed and the date finished. So we've got our classes here and I wanna pull in the email address. So I'm gonna create a new field and I'm not even gonna give it a name cause it's gonna automatically name it for me and Airtable's pretty good about naming lookups which is what we uh, wanna do here. So this is going to be a lookup field type and then it guessed already that I wanna pull from the classes table. And so which field do I want to pull? It's the TA email field. And so what it's going to do is it's going to look up the class, right? So the class that I've linked here, and it's going to pull the appropriate email address. So I create field and you can see here's the email address. Here's the nice name that they generated that says TA email from classes, like from the classes table. And then if I add, let's say swim the English channel, I don't know why you'd have to do that for a class, but let's assume I did have to do that. Uh, for my music theory class. And then as soon as I do that, boom, I've got an email address here. Those are the basics of how to set up linked records in Airtable. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you want to take your to-do list to the next level, watch this video where I show you how to automate recurring tasks.